I shall start with the uh, Cuban ambassador, Her Excellency, Comrade Teresita Vincente, to deliver a short message. Thank you. Thank you, comrades. I'm very honored for the invitation in my, my first visit to, to you, not the last. I will be honored anytime you invite me here. And uh, I, um, I want to thank you for this power, uh, powerful message you brought to us with a short documentary with uh, President Stalin addressing the troops. We all owe to them our freedom from fascism. <laughs> not, only, not only in Europe, but in the new world also. So I, um, I don't think if I should start with the great pro poet uh, Mayakovsky, and he, it's a very, very short part of uh, one of his poems. He said that I, Tolka viviu shil, Tolka satosh to virras kavari val Lenin. So I will, I would learn Russian only because Lenin <laughs> spoke it. I promise not to be too long, <laughs> but I uh, want to quote Fidel Castro. And wait to, I want to start with a quote of Fidel Castro on the impact of the October Revolution and Lenin in the world, and Fidel said, what is the great merit of Lenin? The great merit of Lenin is that having apprehended the Marx doctrine he has defended it, it from all revisionists, has cleared of any distortions from all reviews and interpretations which were attempt, attempt to bring them to the Marx doctrine. Lenin, having armed the Marx theory, frames a party, a struggles inside the party against all petit, petit bourgeois currents, against any pseudo-revolutionary streams, overcomes them inside the party and guided the revolutionary theory to conquer the power. More exactly, conquers a revolutionary power. It is possible to say that from time of October Revolution, all new generations of revolutionaries were educated on his ideas spirit and principles. Any other event has not rendered such influence on minds of the peoples, destiny of the peoples and world progress. The mankind has entered from that moment in the era of the most fruitful revolutionary changes. If there will be no Soviet Union, capitalist powers in conditions of shortage of raw resources and energy crisis, without doubt, would start the partition of the world. If there will be no Soviet Union, it would be impossible even to imagine the measure of indep independence small states enjoy today. This is the end of the quote. But I will talk very briefly uh, about the history of the organized communist movement in Cuba. In the historic archives of the Comintern, December 1919, is marked as the date of the first contact of the Communist International with the Cuban labor movement. And the facts lead us to realize that Lenin was very attentive to the developments and received updated information on Latin America. Mikhail Borodin, emissary of Lenin, after concluding the mission of establishing relations with emerging communist organizations in Mexico, and the United States paid a five-hour visit to Havana. In his travel report dated January 21, 1920, Borodin reports 
the creation of a communist section in Cuba. Borodin received his appointment as Consul General in Mexico on April 17, 1919, in a document that is signed by Lenin. Related documents on Borodin's trip to the Western Hemisphere are preserved, in addition to those related to the creation of the first communist section in Cuba in 1990. These documents not only confirm that Lenin was aware of the problems of the communist movement in Latin America, but was informed in detail about the organization and financing of Borodin trip to Mexico. This is evidence that this is evidence, evidence that Lenin was aware of the rise of emerging Cuban communist movement. From 14 to 16 January 1920, in Havana took place Second National Worker Congress, convened for the purpose of electing delegates to the Congress of the Pan American Workers Confederation. The Congress approved sending a greeting of solidarity to support Russia and the Communist International. In April 1920, a report evaluating the result of the event, noting that the Bureau had in Cuba perfectly well-organized sections, mm -hmm. only waiting for the start of work in Mexico to carry out its, its own activities. The founders of the Cuban Communist Party in August 1925 incorporated the experiences from the, our liberation wars, Martí ideals, Cuban labor movement, the students' movement, and previous experiences in Latin America. Julio Antonio Emeya, its founder, incorporated Latin, Latin Americanism and anti-imperialism. The organizational work and the liberating and international program of the Cuban Revolutionary Party founded by Jose Martí in 1892 with its proletarian bases in Tampa and Key West enriched Meyer's revolutionary conception of the history of Cuba and demonstrate the roots of the ideals of social justice and national independence. Meyer was well aware of the ideals of Martí, and I quote Martí, craft in our republics, the world, but the trunk must be that, that of our republics, Martí said. Inspired by the Communist, Communist International, the Communist League of Cuba would be a key to the crea creative application of the Leninist ideas in colonial and dependent countries. Meya was guiding the organization throughout, throughout Latin America Arriving in Mexico in 1926, he was appointed Secretary General of the Continental Organizing Committee. From this leading position, position he contacted revolutionaries and Democrats throughout the region and promotes the preparatory activities for an international event. Under the leadership of Meyer, Latin American Congress made an important contribution to revolutionary thought of the time, of the time, resolutions on Latin America stands out for its clarity and precision. May advances a characterization of our region according to its relations with U.S. imperialism, representing a theoretical novelty in the concert of the revolutionary movement at the time. May send material support and solidarity to the cause of the Nicaraguan people, led by Augusto Cesar Sandino, who fought the U.S. invasion. He also supported the conspiratorial work of the Venezuelan revolutionaries, who were preparing for armed struggle against the pro-imperialist dictatorship in, his, in their country. October Revolution changed the course of history and made possible facts that previously could not be imagined. I want to stress the immense significance of the solidarity we, we've received from Soviet Union just from the beginning of the Cuban Revolution. How was it possible for a small, 
economically underdeveloped country and a neocolonial status to succeed in defying the biggest imperialist power in history, Cuban revolution was possible because there was long before Russian revolution in 1970. Without the existence of the Soviet Union, it would, it would not have been possible Cuba's social, socialist revolution. <laughs> Without the existence of the Soviet Union, the imperialists would have crushed any na national liberation revolution in Latin America. If the Soviet U Union did not exist, the imperialists would not even need to resort to arms, would have strangled the revolution by hunger. They would have settled only with the economic blockade, but, but as the Soviet Union existed, the revolution could not be annihilated with the economic blockade. When the imperialists, in an arbitrary manner, abolish our sugar quota, that, that fact would have been enough to provoke an enormous damage to the revolution, sinking into hunger and ruin the country. And then the Soviet Union came to our aid, buying our sugar. When the imperialists suspended oil supply that would have been enough to destroy the economy of my country, but then again the Soviet Union sent us oil. But when the economic measures had not produced the desired effect, they began to prepare the interventionist, the interventionist plans. No capitalist country wanted to sell us weapons. It was then that the socialist countries decided to provide with the weapons we needed. And with those weapons and the courage of our people, we could repel the invaders in Playa Girón. <laughs> if the Soviet Union did not exist, the imperialists have not hesitated to attack our country militarily. It was the power of the Soviet Union and all the socialist countries which had, has prevented the imperialist aggression against our country. It is logical that we feel a deep and eternal gratitude to the people of the Soviet Union. This teaches two, two things, that any people, however small, however distant he may be, can carry out their uh, struggle for a better life. <laughs> but at the same time, it shows the immense merit of the Soviet people, the Soviet workers, their great leader Lenin and the party he organized. The imperialists need, need war, capitalism, said Marx, and I quote Mars, Mars, has exuded blood from head to toe, from the very beginning. Capitalism has meant for humanity bloody and barbarous wars, colonial wars, world wars, local wars, wars to divide the world, wars to enslave the peoples, wars to redivide the world, increasingly bloody wars, increasingly destructive wars involving ever more victims, more blood, more destruction, and destruction more and more towards the rear, increasingly away from the battlefronts, increasingly on defenseless populations, increasingly terrible and hum inhumane wars. Imperialists anticipated the Cuban revolution couldn't survive Soviet Union collapse. It did not happen, and it will not happen. In Cuba, socialism was forged by the Cubans in a, a, heroic, a heroic fight. <laughs> we are socialists, and so we will be. We are working to solve our problems to develop our society, a society and to keep all those gains. 
Very recently, 191 countries at UN General Assembly show the re reaction to the inhuman, illegal, barbaric blockade against our country, which is still strongly affecting mm -hmm. our economy, our population. No matter that we will, no matter that we will not relinquish our, our international soli solidarity. Our doctors and teachers will go on helping other people in any place needed. We will not surrender our sovereignty and independence, nor our dignity. Long live socialism and internationalism. Thank you very much. Thank you, Comrade Teresita, for that very moving address informing us of the significance of the Soviet Revolution as well as of what Cuba is doing to defend our socialism and to help other people. But it's a part of your victory that the Americans, after five decades, have at least begun to realize that their policy of blockading in order to bring socialism down in Cuba has failed. What was really sweet was the other day when this resolution asking for the blockade to be removed was introduced to the United Nations. Would you believe United States of America abstained for the first time? They didn't obviously ask for the removal of the blockade, but they abstained. And that is a great moral victory for, for the Cuban, Cuban people. And I